Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to this week's episode of Maconomics. I'm your host, Ross Mack, and I'm here to try to help you get to the bag. We got a new caller calling. Talk to me what you got. Mr. Ross Mack, this Vonda from the South Side, you know how we do it over there. I saw the oil then went negative, you know, like my bank account. What does that mean? You talking about hair oil? What's going on? Man, extremely, extremely great question. Right now, we are having some very unprecedented times when it comes to oil, right? Um, and to be clear, your question on did oil go negative? Yes, oil did go negative, but that's not the overall market of oil. What actually went negative are the future contracts for May next month. And why would something like that happen is because people, given the fact that there's such a imbalance in supply and demand right now, they actually have too much oil stored on their hands. And as a result, they were willing to pay someone else to actually own the oil and actually store the oil. So what actually went negative was someone being a trader and saying, hey, I own this oil. I have nowhere to put it. I'll sell it to you. In fact, no, I'll give it to you and I'll pay you to take it off my hands in order for you to actually store it for me. So as a whole, oil itself was not negative. Just oil to be delivered in the month of May was negative. Now, exactly why this is the case, let me actually take it back to help you understand the actual basic principles of economics, supply and demand. The law of supply and demand is a theory that explains the interaction between sellers of a resource and the buyers of that resource. This relationship affects the price of the goods. Where supply and demand meet, that's where the price itself is set. It's a fundamental economic principle that when the supply exceeds the demand of that good, then the prices actually fall. And that's what we're seeing with oil today. Now, let's take it another step and actually dissect what's going on in the demand and the supply side. There is no surprise that oil demand is at the lowest it's ever been in over 30 years. Why? Think about it. These stay at home orders are forcing you to no longer drive your car. You're not going to and from work, right? People are actually scared to leave their homes. Um, jet fuel is actually uh, down by over 70%. And ladies, trust me, I understand y'all ain't been getting flued out as of recent. That's probably why OnlyFans is busting the way it is. And think about it, warehousing factories, they're being shut down as well. So overall, oil as a whole, the demand is at the lowest it's ever been, right? So now you would think, anytime you see the demand side of the equation diminishing that much, you would think the supply side of the equation would try to adjust, right? Instead, you had the exact opposite. In fact, you had a huge shouting match between the president of Russia and the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. I'm talking, this was worse than Ja Rule and 50 Cent trying to get together at a dinner table, right? You literally had the crown prince of Saudi Arabia shouting at Putin, right? And they were like, you know what? We can't come to any type of agreement. So instead, both countries just said, you know what? We're gonna continue to produce oil. Continue, continue to produce oil. And subsequent, they literally just drove the price of global oil all the way down, right? Reason being, much more supply into the marketplace. Now, obviously you had Trump try to step in, saying, yo, I need to mediate this whole situation. You know what I mean? Cause this is having a very bad impact on the entire world, right? Oil prices as low is not good for anybody. So he mediated the whole situation. He had OPEC and Russia come back to the table and start negotiating where at the end of the day, everybody agreed to cut production by about 10%. That equated to about 10 million barrels a day. However, it was too little too late. So in conclusion, at the end of the day, the oil market is still, you know, very volatile because you have not nearly enough demand to meet a harsh oversupply in the marketplace, right? Not only that, you have no true storage facilities to store all this excess oil. Think about it, no one's buying oil um, because factories are closed down, no one's flying, right? And you still have countries producing too much oil. Uh, do I think this changes in the future? Absolutely. Um, however, in the, in the near time, in the near future, it's still gonna be very volatile because you need demand to pick up and you need supply to still come down a little bit. But overall, great, great question. Next caller, talk to me, what you got? Quick disclaimer, this your boy Ross Mack, I'm just trying to elevate and educate. Damn sure ain't trying to play hey. So if you lose some money fucking around with me, it ain't my fault. It's your boy Ross Mack and we on quarantine right now, so that means you ain't got nothing else to do. So go ahead, go listen to my new music off Maconomics 101.